Mike Bond here with UFC welterweight contender Jeff Neal, who uh, is gracing me with his time, and I feel privileged to be talking to you in more ways than one, Jeff. I mean, seems like this was a pretty scary past few weeks for you. I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this have seen your Instagram post or the subsequent stories about that, but we don't know, you know, too many details about what happened. Uh, it sounds like it was a pretty frightening health scare, though, for you. Can you just walk us through what's going on and tell us how you're feeling now? Yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh... Long story short, because uh, I was I was sick for a minute, like it was it was like a five day process before I actually even got admitted to the ICU. But uh, pretty much, I had an uh, an infection. It's still like unknown what really caused it, but uh, the infection got into my bloodstream, and then I went in a uh, septic shock, and uh, that's what that's what almost uh, sent me over the edge. Man, that's terrifying. So, can, like, can you walk us back? You said you felt bad for about five days. Like, when was the first feelings of like weirdness coming on, or something that wasn't right? And what were those feelings? Uh, it, it started off on like a on like when uh, one I don't know what date, but it was like a Wednesday, and uh, it just it was just a headache, you know, a headache, and then my neck was kind of stiff, and then uh, I went to uh, see our see our, our physical therapist for the team, and uh, he he didn't know like he just thought I was just like having like a like a stress induced headache or whatever, like a get, I guess like the tension, a tension headache. You know what I mean? He's like, my neck's tight. That's what's causing the headache. But then uh, the next day, I woke up with a 104 fever, and then from there, like I started getting diarrhea, started throwing up. Uh, the headache got worse to the point where I couldn't even like get out of bed. I didn't want to get out of bed because it hurt that bad. And then uh, I was dehydrated, and uh, I got to the point where I couldn't even drink water to uh, hydrate myself because anytime I would drink water, I'll throw it right up. So uh, like the last, the final day, I went to the uh, went to went to like a like a like a care now or whatever, and I, I was just went over there to pay for an IV because I couldn't drink water. And then they hooked me up and they see my blood pressure was like dangerously low, so that's when they uh, sent me over to the ICU. Wow, and I mean it's so interesting because right? like as fighters, you guys are always kind of conditioned to push through things, whether it's like an injury or whatever the case may be. Obviously, in like COVID times, you should probably be hyper careful about everything that was going on. But like, when do you know like this isn't something that I could just like push through? There's something really, really serious going on. I, I knew that the 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 Thursday, the second day, once, once I had that 104 fever, and then like the headaches started getting worse. That's when I knew something was like really wrong because. I like I never I never been in that much pain. You know, I, I've been sick. I've been sick a lot. But uh, I've, you know, what I mean, like, you know, what I mean, just drink water, rest. But it got to the point where I couldn't sleep. I, could, I didn't eat like from Wednesday to like Monday. I didn't eat nothing. I couldn't eat nothing. And I, I could barely drink water. And like on that Thursday, I just knew something, something was wrong. I called my coach. I was like, hey, something's wrong, coach. Uh, we need to figure this out. And then uh, he helped me through the whole process. And then finally, somebody actually listened to me. And then they put me in ICU. Yeah, and when you get to the ICU, what are they telling you? Are they like, you know, thank God you came now. If you'd waited out here, yeah. that's when you found out, like, maybe you could have died here. And that's why you said, you know, I almost died. Yeah, pretty much. He said my bro my blood pressure was, like, super low. Some of the doctors were telling me that uh, my kidneys were, like, on the verge of failing. Wow. Uh, my, the Some doctor told me, like, I might have suffered, like, a mild heart attack, too. Wow. I don't know how true that was. But, my like, they said my heart function was, like, super low, like, because my heart was, like, beating – fast the whole time like from thursday all the way up until sunday my heart was like working overtime and uh they did yeah they pretty much said like they that they're glad that i got in there when i did because shit could have went real bad that's crazy and i know i was watching the interview you did with brett okamoto of espn and you said you had had covid back in june right yeah back in june so was there any like theorizing that maybe this had anything to do with that in any way they, they 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 kept on wanting to relate it to COVID. Like I was telling him, they they test me for COVID every place I went. Like I got tested for COVID like a good six times. You know what I mean? And it always came back negative. And I kept on telling him, I was like, I don't, I'm pretty sure this is not COVID. Like I had COVID and it felt nothing like this, you know? And, uh, but they, they, they wanted to say like, well, maybe this is COVID related. Maybe COVID lowered your immune system. I mean, maybe it did. Maybe it did make my immune system lower, but, uh, I still don't feel like I had anything to do with COVID. I really think it was like a, uh, like, I think it was meningitis. Like, I feel like I looked at all the symptoms. Every symptom I had was on point with having meningitis, you know? So, I don't know. I'm just glad uh, we got it worked out and I'm not feeling that way no more. Yeah. And to, how were you feeling when the COVID thing was going on? Were you having any symptoms of that back in June? Yeah, the, the COVID, it, it just felt like a real, like, it felt like a flu. Like, a real, like, I've had the flu before, but it was like a, like, a diet flu. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh 
I, I just like slept in bed for like one day and uh, I lost my sense of taste and lost my sense of smell, but it was nothing like feeling like I needed to go to doctor because I'm about to die. You know what I mean? Yeah. And can you like describe that state at all for when like you were actually feeling, you know, I'm about to die. What can you even describe what that felt like in that moment? It, it really felt like I, I, I had zero energy. Like the Sunday that I, uh, that I went to like that, I actually got admitted to the ICU. Like I was sitting in bed and it was like one o'clock in the morning. And like, I just, I just like jumped up. Like, cause I was trying to sleep. I just jumped up and I was like, man, I need to go to the doctor. And like, I, I wanted to sleep, like sleep felt good. Like I, I really had an option at that point. It was like, go to sleep or go to the doctor. I wanted to go to sleep, but for some reason, like in my body, my body was telling me like, if you go to sleep, you might not wake up. So like, I literally got up at one o'clock in the morning, jumped in my car and I barely made it. Like it, I was going 40 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, like down the highway the whole time. And uh, I finally got to the ER, like struggled to get myself out of the car. Like I had no energy. I had the worst headache ever. Like I just, I really wanted somebody just to carry me inside, but I had to pick myself up and get in there. Man, how tough is that to deal with? Is like, you know, you're one of these alpha males, you're a professional fighter. You don't want, you know, you don't need anything from anyone to have yourself be in that state. Is that really tough to deal with? Yeah, it was tough. I, I felt helpless. It, it was, it sucked. Like, I didn't even want to post nothing about it. You know what I mean? Because I don't want people, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want people feeling sorry for me. You know what I mean? Like, it was tough for me to even make that post, even talking about it. I don't even want to talk about it to a certain extent because, like, I don't want to like, you know what I mean? I don't, I still don't believe that I almost died. Like they keep on telling me I did, but in my mind it's like, man, there's no way like I almost went to that place, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I, it's just, it's still kind of surreal for me. Yeah. That is freaky. And of course, while this is going on, I mean, you were scheduled to fight Neil Magny on August yeah. 29th. Um, at what point of this, I mean, I'm sure, well, like you're in, you know, deeply dealing with all of it, the fight's probably not even on your mind too much, but at what point all in that process being like, well, there's no way I'm fighting in like three weeks or four weeks or whatever it was. The, the Thursday, once I had that 104 fever and the headache got worse, I knew like, like whatever was wrong, there's no way I was going to bounce back and be able to train. You know what I mean? Like I, like I said, like I, I never felt that sick. Like I was telling somebody that I was with, I was like, I wish this on nobody. Like it was, it was that bad. I, I was, I was in some serious pain. That's crazy. So today, as we talk now, where are you now? Are you able to train? Or are they still telling you to, you know, take things easy? How do you think stand today? They, they want me to take things easy. Because they said, uh, the, pretty, my body, my body went through a lot, you know, my, my body, all my organs, my heart. Uh, once I get cleared, I got a couple appointments next week, I'm gonna get cleared. And then, uh, once I get cleared, I'm going to start off with like light workouts and stuff, but, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to hit it hard right off the jump. I'm going to, I'm going to slowly get back into it. <laughs> Yeah, that seems like the right plan. You mentioned, you know, there could be a kidney issue. Is there any concerns about what happens the next time you try to cut weight or anything like that? There, well, not now that you say it. Yeah, there is a concern, but uh, I'm just gonna make sure uh, my diet's uh, on point because usually I don't like diet like hardcore because I'm able to cut so much water because with all the muscle I got. But now I'm gonna have to be real uh, meticulous with my diet and uh, what I do, especially with the first weight cut coming after all this. Yeah. So do you think it might be a little bit till we see you? I mean, it's already been since December. Do you think maybe we don't even see you in 2020 now? I don't know. I, I really want to get back in it. Once, once I'm cleared and I'm like in the gym back to the, uh, the level that I was at, then I, I feel like I'm, I could, I, I feel like I can get there before the end of the year. I really want to fight before the end of the year. I don't want to wait a whole fucking year before I get a fight. Uh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to recover as quick as I can, uh, the healthy way and then get back in there. What do you do to just kind of take your mind off this so you're not stressing around it? I mean, I know you like to train and you probably want to keep active, but you need to tile that back a bit. So what it's kind of your day-to-day -day like just kind of <laughs> time? Lately? From nothing. Watching uh, Netflix and playing the video game. Like, I'm literally going crazy. Yeah. The time's going by so slow. <laughs> what, what are you playing? Uh, Warzone, Call of Duty Warzone. I get on there and uh, it's really good because I got like a lot of my friends that are on there. So I get on there, socialize, have fun, talk shit, you know? And then uh, whenever there, nobody's playing, I just uh, watch TV. Perfect. <laughs> well, I'm on there too sometimes, so maybe we'll have to link up. We'll uh, exchange info off camera here. Yeah, all right. It sounds like a plan. Sounds good. And then awesome, man. Like, it's uh, it's crazy, though. You pull out of that fight and Robbie Lawler steps in, who you've been wanting to fight for years. Were you were you surprised that that ended up being the replacement? I was super surprised that was the replacement. I was like, whenever, whenever uh, they said Neil's fighting Robbie, I was like, where the fuck Robbie been? Like, I've been trying to fight Robbie for years and then he just suddenly comes up fight but it, it's good for neil 
you know, like I was, I was, I talked to him a little bit. I told him like, that's a blessing, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even though I'm mad that he got that fight and I didn't get the fight, but it is what it is. Shit like that happens, you know? So, uh, I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping Neil wins and I can run that back with him. You know what I mean? Uh, I was already scheduled to fight him and like I was in mid camp, uh, getting ready for him, but I would like to fight him after that, after all this shit, uh, said and done with. Yeah. So did Neil reach out to you personally after you fell out of the fight? Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a, we had a little conversation. Uh, that's nice of him for sure. So you think he wins that fight then? I, I think so. Open? I think so. Uh, that that's, that's, uh, off of like this first glance. I, I feel like he's going to win that fight. Interesting. And last time I think we talked was the very end of June. I think it was the week before uh, Usman and Masvidal fought. Uh, what did you think of that fight right there that we ended up seeing? I don't know. Um, Usman did what it took to win. That's all I can really say about that. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like what, how it was like all the – yeah, I didn't like it. But he, he did what it took to win. He's champ. That's You're all I got to say. Not a fan of foot stomps? Yeah, huh? You're not a fan <laughs> of foot stomps? Man, I think he could do a little, about five more foot stomps. I don't think he did enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. So, I mean, is that kind of the, the focus right now? Is Neil Magny, maybe Robbie, a few wins? Do you think that's the most likely fight? Or you, is it kind of too hard to say where things will stand once you're ready it's, to go? It's hard to say. Uh, Neil Magny, Robbie Lawler, uh, maybe uh, Michael Chiesa. Doubt he's going to take that fight. Uh, Vicente Luque is still out there. You know what I mean? He's he's on a tear. He's been tearing everybody ass up. Uh but I, I really want to fight Vicente on like a like a main event, you know. Like that's a, I feel like me one when me and Vicente fight, it needs to be something like high profile. I don't want it to get lost on the sauce. Like, and he deserves a main event. He's been what what is his record like, twelve and one or something shit like that in UFC. Yeah, I think it's like thirteen and two, something like that. Yeah, like all the finishes he got, like he deserves a main event spot. You know, like especially for his next fight. So, uh, you know, if if we do fight, you know what I mean, give us what we both deserve. I feel like we we can uh, pull off a real good main event. Yeah, definitely. And I imagine you were bummed for Uriah, too. We were talking about that last time I was yeah. supposed to be him to fight Yoel, and then that happens to him as well. Yeah, that's the second fight that uh, fell out for him because he's supposed to fight, uh, what's that dude? Uh, Jack, Ray. Yeah. Jack Ray. Yeah, Jack Ray. And he's been, so he's pretty much been training all year for two fights that fell through. So that, that really does suck for him. He's literally yeah. been training all all year <laughs> for nothing. Well, I mean, not for nothing. Have you even had the chance to like go into the gym to kind of just see the environment around or do you not even want to like put yourself in there? Cause it might be too much to bear at the moment. Yeah. I haven't been back. Like since I got out the uh, ICU, I've been, I, cause I know what it's going to do to me. It's just going to make me want to train. And it's going to get me fucking just like too tense and wired up. So I just stay away from it. Yeah. Fair play. Well, hopefully things, you know, get better in the next few weeks and everything just goes smooth, smoothly and you're able to book a fight soon enough, man. It was uh, definitely concerning when we saw that post come out, but glad uh, you were able to talk a little bit more in detail about it. And obviously glad you're here now to talk about it yourself. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, taking time to interview, man.